各位阁下，呃，各位同事、女士们、先生们，大家下午好。Good afternoon. 非常高兴能够出席这次会议。It's my pleasure to join this event. 当前气候系统持续变暖， global warming, 极端气候事件多发频发。Weather are causing extensive and profound impact and risks to the world. Taking positive adaptation actions is a realistic, pressing, and inevitable choice. China has complex climates and huge regional differences, very sensitive to global climate change with fragile ecosystems. In 2020, extreme heat events, high temperature, and drought risk indexes in China recorded the worst since 1961, and the average days of precipitation also recorded the lowest since 1961. Extreme weather and climate events caused 12.068 million hectares of crop damage nationwide, with a direct economic loss of 214.75 billion RMB. This year. Heavy rains and floods in northern China have also caused significant loss of life and property. We are increasingly concerned about the uncertainty of climate change. In order to prevent the impact caused by climate change, China is actively implementing the national strategy for adaptation to climate change 2035, strengthening vulnerability assessments and impact study of climate change. Promoting adaptation actions at the provincial level and piloting climate resilient cities and strengthening adaptation activities across all key areas and regions in its effort to national capacity building in adaptation. China relates strongly to developing countries, especially those in Africa, on the impact from climate change, as China is the largest developing country in the world with 1.4 billion population. China has been providing support to developing countries through the South-South Cooperation Framework in addressing climate change. In late 2021, China and Africa jointly launched the Declaration on China-Africa Cooperation on Combat and climate change, establishing the China-Africa Strategic Partnership to address climate change in the new era with a three-year action plan. Recently, China will launch the program Africa Solar Belt, investing at least 100 million RMB to help around 50,000 poor African families in areas without power supply to provide lighting with green and low-carbon energy. Meanwhile, China and the WMO have signed a cooperation agreement on supporting the UN Early Warning for All initiative to carry out cooperation projects under the South-South Framework in order to provide early warning facilities and capacity building to developing countries, including African ones. We have provided multiple countries with satellite uh, facilities to help those countries to get early warning about rains and, and floods. China fully understands the concerns and support the demands of African countries regard to climate change, adaptation, adaptation and financing. First of all, I've heard from a lot of remarks from the heads of states, especially those from Africa, talking about their need for adaptation financing and the relationship between mitigation and adaptation. I call for international communities, especially the developed countries, to provide financial support to African countries, stronger financial resources to developing countries. As developing countries, including African ones, are the main victims of climate change, and they have invested huge domestic resources in 
dealing with climate change. While developed countries which bear historical responsibility for climate change should provide developing countries with adequate financial, technological, and capacity building support for adaptation, China is willing to work with African countries to promote multilateral processes on key issues, including the global goal on adaptation framework, the roadmap for doubling, doubling adaptation funding, and the loss and damage fund. At the same time, China is willing to further strengthen exchanges with African countries in adaptation, share adaptation experience and case studies with each other, deepen our practical partnerships, and jointly promote climate resilient development. That's all for my speech. Thank you to all of you. Thank you.